I've painted six of these beautiful Osworn mini characters so far, and it's time to break out the Army Painter speed paints and paint two more. I'll spend a little more time sharing details of how I get my minis ready to paint, including how I prime the minis, as well as how I use dry brushing differently in my version of the slap chop method. Let's get to it. This is the Ursus War Bear, a fierce looking bear wielding a two handed axe. This one should be fun. I start with a coat of spray can black, completely covering the mini. You can find this paint just about anywhere, Walmart, your local Ace Hardware, you name it, and it's cheap. Next I give it a zenithal spray of gray, which basically means a spray from above, to give it a lighting effect. You can see how I applied it as I turn the mini to show it from the top. Now I'll break out my new Minotaur Hobbies dry brush that I picked up in a recent Kickstarter and load it up with some Vallejo white paint. Next I use this texture palette to remove most of it. If you don't have a texture palette, you can use a scrap of cardboard or a paper towel to brush off the paint. Now on to the dry brushing of the mini. Like I said before, this is my own version of Slap Chop, and honestly the technique is wrong according to a lot of painters. I go way too heavy with the white and should have a much drier brush than I do, but hey, this is what works for me. When I first started with this technique, I was much lighter with this step, but I didn't love the look of the speed paint colors on that dark background. I need more white basing to get the color pop I'm after. Now I could just prime in all white, but then I would lose all the shading from Slap Chop. And even though I'm going heavy, I'm still maintaining the dark corners and creases on the model. And honestly, this technique also helps to bring out the details on the model to help me with the actual painting. The perfect example is the detail on the axe. This priming and dry brushing really pulls out the detail. Now this bear is ready for some painting. Here's the first look at the second mini we'll be painting today. You can see this one is also primed up, but has less variance in the priming than the bear. Fewer nooks and crannies on this one, so the prime coat is much smoother. This is the Adendri Ranger, which makes sense as she has a nice big bow. A much more lithe model than the hulking bear, so it will be interesting to see how she turns out. It's time to start painting with Holy White on the Ursus War Bear. I often start with the lowest level I can, which is wherever I see skin, or in this case, fur. One important technique I learned early on was to paint up. Start with the lowest level areas and then slowly work your way out to the other layers. Anyhow, we're going with a polar bear look here, and Holy White is the lightest speed paint I have. While I do love speed paints, one issue I do have is with really light colors, particularly white. This Holy White looks gray out of the bottle, and I have yet to get a good bright white out of it like I had hoped. Maybe some of you can help me out in the comments with this one to get a more of a white color. But I'll just plan to fix it with some white acrylic paint later on. In some ways it looks like I'm not doing anything at all, but trust me when I'm saying I'm hitting all the fur areas I can find with this holy white. Looks like I got all the fur, so it's on to the next layer. Now I'm moving on to a color I just picked up recently, Aztec Gold. This is one of the many metallic variants available in the speed paint line. Keep in mind that the speed paint metallics don't have the exact same properties as other speed paint colors. They don't provide the same free shading and highlights, but they do a great job with one coat coverage. I like the dingy green color of Aztec Gold so far, as I think it suits this mini. This looks like the kind of ancient armor an animated polar bear might wear. Now on to my number one most used speed paint color, Hardened Leather. And I'm not the only one in the speed paint community that loves this one. It looks fairly bright going on wet, but as it dries it has the look of old cracked leather. It's a great color for fantasy minis. Useful on things like belts and the grip on the war bear's weapon. Now I'm switching over, bad camera work and all, sorry about that, to Broadsword Silver, my most used metallic from Speed Paint. I'll first use it for the metal details on the various belts and buckles on the War Bear, but it's also great for bladed weapons on Fantasy Minis. I'll make the business end of this two-handed battle axe even nastier. Now let's shake up some things with some bold color with Magic Blue. It has really great applications for arcane magic elements on minis, for things like fireballs for instance, but it will do nicely for the cloth around the abdomen area of our war bear. 
This is a part of the mini where we are dealing with flatter areas that don't always play nicely with the properties of speed paints. I take care to try to wipe away the excess with my brush and move it around so it doesn't all bleed down and pool heavily into one area. I added the color dark wood to the haft of his battle axe, and now the major painting of this mini is complete, but I don't love the fur color. Let's do some dry brushing to try to add more white to his fur. I'll use a small dry brush from Army Painter and load it up with white, and then wipe most of it off as we did before. I found you can control how much paint gets on the mini when dry brushing with how much pressure you apply. And in this case, I want it heavier in some areas, but more like highlighting in others. I'm applying more pressure here in the area around his head, but will brush it more lightly on his chest, arms, and legs. Now it's getting to represent the color I was looking for. I wasn't looking for pure white all over, as I'd expect any battle-ready bear to have a load of road dust, and the gray undertone with the white over the top is getting it right where I want it. The spares really come together, but the armor, though dull, is still too bright. So on to the dark wash. This is a technique I picked up recently and I can't stop using it. I love the coverage and hue of the speed paint metallics, but most of them end up too bright and shiny if you don't rub a little road dirt. And that's exactly what this dark wash is doing. Washes feel like very watered down speed paints. They run the way of gravity and into the recesses. I primarily use it to dirty up metallics on medieval minis like this one. Now right about here is where I laid it on a little too heavy. I brushed some of it away, but then I'm going to grab a dry brush that's nearby to try to suck up the excess, and it does the job. With the war bear out of the way, it's time to tackle the Adendri Ranger. As before, we'll start with the bottom layer, her skin. In this case, I'm using the Warrior Skin Speed Paint. This is a dark skin tone, and I think it will fit nicely with the woodland theme of this ranger. She looks like she's perhaps grown out of the trees directly, so I think this paint works well for that. There's an awful lot of underlying skin to cover here from her exposed midriff to her feet, but I suppose that's because, well, female models often have less coverage than male or male bear models. In any case, the warrior skin looks great. We'll go with a green tone again for her armor with the Forest Sprite Speed Paint. Since the ranger's armor looks to be more of the leather variety, we aren't using a metallic tone this time. Forest Sprite is a medium faded green color, and so far I think it's playing nicely with that dark skin tone. You can see I'm getting great coverage on her armor and it's filling in quickly. I love how easy it is to roll through areas on a mini with one coat of speed paint. This is a good thing as I have a lot of armor to cover here. You'll also notice I'm again taking advantage of the modular pieces of these Oathsworn miniatures. They're sort of a super deluxe version of the game, with swappable weapons, and though I don't have the extra weapons, I still have the ability to take parts off, in some cases, to help clear the way. I'll be using this Noble Skin Speed Paint to work on the quiver on the ranger's back and her bow. I wanted to ensure the color was darker than her skin tone and this paint slots in just the way I wanted. It also works nicely with my tree bark and leaves color scheme so far. I'm really liking the dark mahogany tone for the bow's wood. Helps convey the feeling that she sprouted right from a nearby tree, bow in hand. Her hair, however, needs a brighter pop of color. We'll use this plasmatic bolt speed paint. I've used this color in a few applications before and love its blue-green turquoise tone. Yes, I know I kind of threw the woodsy color scheme out the window here, but I think she still needs a little personality this beautiful mane of hair just the right place for it. We're almost at the finish line here and I'll quickly paint the base. I don't yet get into fancy basing with elements like sand and rocks, but I can definitely see it in my future. For now, I generally use one or maybe two colors for the whole thing. In this case, I'm using desolate brown for the bottom area and noble skin for the tree trunk that our ranger is standing on. This is also a good example of what happens when you paint a darkly primed area with speed paint, which leads to much more muted colors. And finally, a look at the finished minis in all their glory. You can see how easy it is to turn out solid looking minis quickly with Army Painter speed paints. Like, subscribe, and as always, thanks for watching.